the Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to CarryLutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro trainings on financial survival. This show is brought to you by Miles Franklin. They've been selling gold and silver for 22 years. And I'm a customer because when you buy, they ship. For more information, go to milesfranklin.com or call them at 800 822 8080. Are you in the middle class or close to it and concerned about your future? Do you think the middle class is disappearing in America? Then you really need to hear from Charles Hugh Smith, what he has to say. He's a blogger, author, philosopher, and some might say an economist. And he joins us for the first time on the Financial Survival Network. Hey, Charles, thanks for being with us today. Hi, Kerry. It's my pleasure. And thanks for the invitation. Well, I've been looking at your work for quite a while. You're definitely somebody that I've wanted to connect with. And I was just reading your article about how the middle class is doomed. And just, if you can, briefly, why, if you're in the middle class, are you doomed? I think we can uh, put this in context, uh, a long-range context. And that's the only way we can really grasp the dynamics that are at work. So if we look back um, over several hundred years, we've, we find this cycle of economic growth and contraction. And, uh, you know, that's common sense. We're all familiar with that basic idea. And so uh, what happens in the growth phase is um, the essential commodities that we all need, you know, food and grain, or energy and so on. These, um, these are sought out and, and the supply expands to meet the growing demand and, and population rises and the number of people working rises. And so it's a, what we call a virtuous cycle, right? More people are, are earning money. The wages are going up because there's big demand, and um, and then it feeds uh, demand for uh, commodities, and so it's a it's a virtuous cycle. It feeds on itself, but at the top, and then on the declining phase, it turns out that all that uh, all that labor becomes surplus. There's too many people looking for jobs, and and um, and so the labor goes into surplus, and then the commodities that we all need go into shortage because of this huge demand growth has outstripped our ability to supply it. And, in, and uh, in America, we don't really see that in grain or food yet, but we certainly see it in energy. And we certainly see the weakening in demand for, for labor, you know, for employment. So on the downside, then it becomes an unvirtuous cycle and, and costs for the, everything we need keep going up, but our wages stagnate or decline. And that's where the middle class is stuck now. And is there a way out for them? Uh, that would be a tough call because they, these, um, I think we can say that there are things that any individual or household can do to lessen the impact of these large cycles, but to say that we can escape this cycle completely, I think that's, um, that, that verges on denial. You know, we're, we're going to have to deal with, you know, the global economy. There's 2 billion other people that now want to live like us and they're sucking up a lot of energy and they'll be sucking up a lot of food, and, and so prices are going to keep rising. But there's an oversupply of labor around the world, and so our wages are going to be under pressure. So in a, in a large measure, we've become almost too productive because a lot of the industries that used to employ thousands of people in factories, even though they're still healthy in the United States, they don't need as much labor, do they? No, I, that's an excellent point, Kerry. And we can look at the internet, uh, which we are using this very minute as the, the as the primary mover of this uh, trend. You know that the, the web enables so much greater productivity and a lot less labor. And so you get um, in the good old days. You know, U.S. Steel might have a hundred thousand workers. GM had a hundred thousand workers at one point. And then you look at like. Uh, Twitter has like 800 employees and right. Facebook has like four or 5,000. And, and these are like global, you know, enterprises that are the top of the social media network. And, and they're, they're creating trivial numbers of jobs. And so, yeah, it's going to be tough, but there are, there are ways we can, you know, work around it. Which is 
two two questions I was going to ask you about two books you've written. One is uh, your guide to unconventional investing, and the other is how people can become bloggers and effectively start internet businesses because the old model of business with mass media and advertising is is kind of doomed along with the middle class and maybe that's why the middle class is doomed as well but each one separately so from an investing standpoint how do you invest uh the the basic approach that i suggest is look to diversify your sources of income and you know this again is common sense but in in the post-industrial economy of the last 20 30 40 years we've all been told to specialize and and depend on uh, one secure job your whole life you know that was this kind of ideal and of course that as we all know is the is, is a model that's becoming less and less viable you know there, you're going to have seven or eight different jobs and um, you might not have full-time work at one position so m my basic idea is start your own little micro business um, build your social capital your network of contacts and try to try to develop several income streams within the household so that you're not just uh, vulnerable and dependent on one source of income and then in terms of uh, of investing I, I I tend to think that we're moving away from this centralized globalized economy where your best bet to you know get rich and prosperous is to work for a global corporation I, I tend to think that the whole global economy is is what we might call relocalizing that the local economy that is where we can actually invest and we will control those assets as opposed to like you invest in Wall Street, some fund that claims to be uh, investing your money wisely in Timbuktu, and then oh, yeah. guess what? You know there was a currency crisis or something, and, and it's all wiped out, or some the, the manager skimmed all the profits. And so I, I just don't trust Wall Street to manage my money that much. And I, and if we, so the model is get get your money out of Wall Street and get it into something that you understand in your own community, you know, and then. You're serving your community and you're, you know, potentially making some money. Right. And you haven't just uh, talked the talk on this. You've walked the walk. And going back to setting up Internet businesses with multiple streams of income, you can still keep your day job for as long as it's going to be there. And my theory, personal theory, we're getting a little off of what we talked about initially. But my theory is everybody has an area of expertise that the rest of the world will support them in in acquiring that you know things that other people don't regardless who you are and the internet makes it so easy to get that information out and to really connect with people in a way that was never possible before and the longer you wait to uh, to get into this the harder it gets because you're going to be under financial pressure and difficulties emerge challenges and it's better if you voluntarily go down this course than being forced on it right excellent yeah very very well said carrie and um i think you and i both share the philosophy that we're living which is self-reliance rather than reliance on um the central state or the federal government to take care of us and self-reliance is, is the way to go and that, that means building networks of support and the internet enables us to build, um, not only strengthen our local uh, real world connections with people we know in our community, but it, with people that are far away that can become our support group and our customers. And, um, yep. you know, we all know the eBay model. I mean, potentially hundreds of thousands of people, the exact numbers unknown, are, are creating an income stream off of buying and selling stuff in America. And of course, the, the greatest, the most powerful thing you can own is information. And so in a way, you and I are in the business, if you will, of uh, uh, the enterprise we're engaged in is, is um, exchanging and in information and creating content to help people do more with what they have. And the idea of erasing those borders, for instance, financialsurvivalnetwork.com, about 25% of our audience is from Canada. And then we've got to, we've got people listening, you know, you know who you are all over the world in Singapore, Malaysia, even in China. Uh, we've, I've seen a couple in Iran and it's kind of amazing the way that this new model, this new way of 
locally based but internationally focused get you out there and you connect with people like i've got a guy in Würzburg, germany who posts my podcast to youtube and he just started doing it and i i found the guy because i did a google search we connected we've become really good friends as a result and you meet all these people as a result that you could never ever hope to connect with and your whole focus of relationships in your life really totally changes from a res- from this right absolutely and uh that 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 personal enhancement of your life um i, I call it uh, other people do too social capital in other words we're, we're so used to thinking of capital as cash but you know there's a social capital meaning the people that you know that can help you and, and, and reach your goals and then you can help them and you can build these overlapping networks and so uh, the way that business works is is you you offer something that's of use to a network of other people and if you can establish that network then uh you're buying their products and and they're buying your products and examples of this are it's uh all over the place and you know like um just as a brief example i i read recently where a guy put together a fairly complicated uh technical device you know sensors and 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 uh motors and all this kind of stuff and in the past he would have had a really hard time accessing all these little parts and um because you'd have to go through distributors and pay high fees and all this well he just accessed it all from the from the guys making it on the internet and it it just like cut off like 80 percent of the cost of this and so you go wow with this model there's so much more we can do just even as individuals you know or households or you know sure yeah and a guy who's an auto mechanic say He can get on there and tell other people, look, times are getting tough. You're going to have less money to devote to hiring people to fix your cars. I can help you do these basic things and you'll save a lot of money that you can devote elsewhere. And he's got an expertise and there's a portion of the population that'll pay for it. I've done it so many times myself, Charles, where I need to find out something about broadcasting I've paid people to do it. I've also found them for free on YouTube. I found them for free on YouTube, taking the taking the, their instruction and then purchased a course from them later on. So it really opens up worlds. And it's like you said, social capital. I'm going to use that term from now on because that's what we all need to be investing in. And finally, uh, we've got Joe Tupac. He used to be called Joe Sixpack, but the <laughs> depression has cut his income and wealth by two thirds. Should he buy debt? Uh, Should he buy metals? Should he go into debt to buy metals? We kind of have, I wouldn't call it a difference of opinion, but a different perspective on this. Yeah, it's uh, and I I didn't mean to, uh, in in laughing at your, um, your quip, I didn't mean to demean Joe Tupac because (laughs) I I am so two pack. I mean, you know, I worked my way through college, you know, doing construction and um, that's how I made my living in my twenties and thirties. And so, and you know, my income, I made more money. I've checked it on the Bureau of Labor Statistics site. I made more money in 1975 than I do now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Inflation adjusted for sure. Uh, yeah. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't I don't claim and I have no trust fund, you know, and, you know, I'm not paid by a think tank or whatever. I mean, I am out there on the edge, you know, exposed to all the risk of of entrepreneurship every day of my life, just as you are. And uh, I I mean, I like it. You know, I'm used to it. And I don't um, I don't think it feels insecure to me because if you're doing your own thing, hey, that's security. You know, you control your 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 enterprise. And that's in a way the real security that we seek, not the security of a paycheck from some global corporation or the state or whatever. But um, yeah, to answer your question, um, I mean, debt, paying off debt is is a way of creating an income stream in the sense that if you get rid of your debt, you don't have to pay any more interest. And so that's a way of boosting your income from that point of view. Um, uh, the other topic would be, are you taking on debt for an investment that's really sound, that's going to pay off big? Good debt, like Robert Kiyosaki says. Yeah. And so a lot of people uh, have fallen for the notion that uh, borrowing $100,000 for a bachelor's degree from college is going to 
really pay dividends. And that's really, that's a, that's a thesis that's really questionable now. And, and one that I tend to disagree with, and, unless you're, um, unless you're, in a, unless you're earning a degree in a specialized field that has guaranteed jobs at high rates of pay, a petroleum I, I engineer, geologist, uh, mining engineer, things like that. Maybe even doctor. I wouldn't. Being a lawyer, I don't know that it's really a good investment. But uh, if you love the law, then by all means. But yeah, do you take that money, shove it into a degree, or invest in three businesses? The first two will fail, and then the third one will succeed beyond your wildest expectations from the lessons you learned from the past too, right? So uh, we, we kind of agree on that. So, so then to wrap up, uh, you know, I highly recommend uh, those two books, uh, the, the entrepreneur book that you have, just give the names, and the uh, unconventional investing book. And where can we find you to learn more and get those books? Okay. Um, uh, the uh, first book is called Weblogs and New Media, Marketing in Crisis. And the second book is called An Unconventional Guide to Investing in Troubled Times. And you can visit me on um, the web at of2minds.com and, uh, or just Google Charles Hugh Smith and there'll be you know a couple hundred thousand links for you to follow. <laughs> Which I did and you're definitely out there. I am going to buy those two books, by the way. I'm going uh, to your site after we get off because you know they just uh, resonated with me when I read the titles and I looked at the first two chapters that you can read there and I said, you know, I know a lot of this, but there's so much more there that Charles has outthought me on and he's ahead of me on. So I got to go find out. Thank you very much, Kerry. That's quite a compliment and an honor. Hey, well, likewise, thank you so much for coming on the Financial Survival Network. And if anybody wants to look at our other interviews and we've got constant news aggregation dissemination going on, just go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. And we'll talk to you again soon, Charles. Thank you very much, Kerry. My pleasure. Likewise.